The area which is known today as Nicosia was first inhabited 5,000 years ago. The first people that lived there built small settlements on the hills around the city and also along the Pedieros River bank. Around 700 BC, these small settlements became a single kingdom known as Libra. During the Hellenistic period, when Cyprus belonged to the dynasty of the Ptolemies of Egypt, its name changed and it was renamed the City of the White Gods, or Lefkothea, to honor Lefkon, the son of King Ptolemy. In the early Christian period, its name changed again and the city was now called Lefkosia or Nicosia. Nicosia became the capital of the island during the Byzantine period, after the people of Cyprus abandoned the coastal cities and moved inland in order to protect themselves from the Arab raids, which lasted from the 7th to the 10th century. In 1184, Cyprus was under the rule of Isaac Comnenus, who proclaimed himself despot of Cyprus. In 1191, Richard the Lionheart conquered the island in order to free his fiancée, Angaria of Namar, who had been mistreated by Isaac. He then sold it to the order of the Templars, the people of the sea of the fort of the the Templars were forced to return the islands to Richard, who immediately found a new wire, the French noble Guido Zunia. The latter founded the medieval kingdom of Cyprus and the Seer remained for the capital. The city kept growing in the cosmopolitan capital with 360 public churches, houses, and other medieval buildings. Some of these are still standing. The impressive medieval metropolitan church of Hagia Sophia in the centre of the city. This church was converted to a mosque in 1517. 
The Church of St. Nicholas, or Nicholas Town, which was built over an earlier Byzantine church. Santa Maria of the Augustinians, which was also converted to a mosque, as well as the Church of St. Catherine. The Royal Palace was found in the end of the known today as the Castle Street, and the only monument that has survived in the area is a building known as Cassegotis. Ruling Cyprus for a few years, she was forced to abandon the island and resign her crown to the Doge of Venice. The Venetians deemed it necessary to build new fortifications for Nicosia. They called upon Giulio Savognano, who designed the new walls of the city, and gave them the shape of a star with eleven bastions. These walls are considered to be a prototype of Renaissance architecture. The new fortifications were built with the financing of many of the noble families of Nicosia and had three gates. Giulia, Paracosta Gate, San Domenico, Paphos Gate, and Proveditor, Kyrene Gate. On the 2nd of July 1570, the Ottomans landed on Cyprus and marched to Nicosia. On the 9th of September, it's said that the first Ottoman flag bearer, the Bayraktar, managed to climb the walls of the city and raise his flag on the Constanza Bastion, where afterwards a small mosque was built to honor him. Nicosia remained the seat of the Ottoman commander who lived in the Serai, which was a medieval palace. The city was also the seat of the Greek Orthodox Archbishop, who resided in his palace and officiated in the Cathedral of Aios Ioannis. The official representative of the Greeks of Cyprus, along with the Archbishop, was the Dragoman, the interpreter, who also acted as a tax collector. The mansion of one famous Dragoman, Hagiorgakis Cornesios, is still standing. During the early 19th century, Archbishop Kiblianos founded the first school in Nicosia, which still operates today as the Pancyprian Gymnasium. In 1821, in order to prevent a possible uprising of the Greeks of Cyprus, the commander of the island ordered the execution of Archbishop Kiblianos and the rest of the bishops, as well as that of most of the Greek leaders. Some were hanged others beheaded in a square in front of the Sarai. In 1857, the Fanaromeni Girls' School was founded, and in the same year, the Church of Panagia Fanaromeni was built. The French vice-consul and philodine, Gustave Lafon, mediated in order to obtain the necessary permission to erect the first belfry at a Greek Orthodox church since the period of Latin rule. In 1878, in a secret agreement, the administration of the island was turned over to the British Empire. Nicosia remained the capital of the new British colony. The year 1882 saw the establishment of municipalities in all towns. Today, Nicosia's municipality is housed in a magnificent neoclassical building on a bastion which overlooks Eleftheria or Liberty Square. Nicosia was, and still is, the centre of the business life of the island. The most commercial road, which experiences a lot of development, is Lidra Street. This is where Chagolas Town is located. It's the longest and most straight road in the city within the walls. There are many shops, and until 1958, the women's market, known as Gineco Bazaro, used to take place every Friday at the end of this street. Women from all over Cyprus would come here to sell their handmade products. In the 1950s, the Greeks of Cyprus officially demanded their independence and a union with Greece, first through a referendum and later with a fight for liberation from 1955 to 1959. On the 16th of August 1960, in the building which houses today the House of Representatives, the Independent Republic of Cyprus was established. The island now had its own parliament, ministries and new schools. In the newly established state, 
all the communities participated, Greeks, Turks, Armenians, Maronites, Matins. In 1963, with the rebellion of the Turks of Cyprus, Nicosia was divided by the Green Line. This was followed by the Turkish invasion in 1974, whereby the island remains divided. From this tower, you can look over our city. Look in the four directions of the horizon and see in front of you the city of Nicosia, its monuments, its history and its people. To the north, you can see the occupied part of the city and, with your eyes, you can run through the walls of the Divine Line. Thank you.